Hi everybody, I'm Donna Terrell and this is Terrell Talk. This is a program where I get to talk to people in the community that I find interesting. Today, I'm talking with Fitz Hill. He is a member of the Arkansas Board of Education and former president of Arkansas Baptist College. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me, Donna. You know what, we're gonna talk about this special program that you head up. It's called Sixth and Gold yes, in the Little Rock School District. Tell us about it. Well, you know, 10 years ago, Donna, um, sixth grade football was eliminated as a cost saving measure for the Little Rock School District. But as I, as a state board member visiting schools, looking at young people, particularly middle school kids getting in trouble, and the sixth grade being a gap year, I got with the athletic director, the superintendent, and I said, hey, listen, as a discipline issue, or a, a, I know you were trying to save money, but I think as a mentoring program, if I found the funds to bring the Sixth and Gold program back, could we do that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we were able to do that, and I got community people involved, First Security Bank, Bar State Bank, Bill Dillard, um, Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and I said, if we can invest in these young people in the sixth grade, I said, I think the long end effect will be positive. And I said, we can keep young people in school mm -hmm. because data shows that when kids are involved in extracurricular activities, that they do better, they persist better, mm -hmm. they matriculate better in school. There's something magical though about the sixth grade. There's something about the sixth grade that's special in terms of capturing these students at that point. You right? know, you know, there's no question about it. You're going through puberty, a lot of change is going on. And the thing it is, is that Let's, we live in almost a fatherless society in many situations mm -hmm. right now. So nearly six, sometimes 60, 70% of our homes are, are led by women, yeah, all true. right? And so what we're trying to do is, is called model up, is put men in the lives of these young people through something that young boys want to do. They like to hit, they like <laughs> to play, they like to do things. Now, we're, we're aware of the concussion symptoms and all those things. Uh, right, and of course we can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I know and you probably do everything possible to make sure that these children are The best are equipment, the best helmets. I mean, we, 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 we didn't hold anything back mm -hmm. about blow a quick whistle. I mean, that's not why we're out there to get somebody hurt. We're out there to say, how can we stay in the sixth grade get you to the seventh grade, matriculate to the eighth grade, and graduate. Yes. All right? Yes. And so that coach, we ask our coaches, Donna, to go eat lunch with our young people once a week. We ask them to talk to them about academics. We're doing a study that trying to see how they will matriculate and graduate, those being involved, if they're involved playing football or ban or whatever. I think some people, though, would argue focusing on sports you know, a lot of people yeah. take issue with that no because, I mean, these young kids, you know, come on, let's face it, not all of them are going to be even college football players, let alone NFL players. So when you talk about careers and that sort of thing, are you kind of steering them in the, in the wrong direction no. by, by, you know, funneling them into sports? No, no, because that's an extracurricular activity just as we could say dance. Mm. Okay, and my daughter, she loves dance, and so I want to I want to be a proponent of those extracurricular activities. Band, somebody who plays a band, but young boys in the sixth grade, if you can get them and gather them into what I call a uni unified approach, that we're teaching teamwork. And I say teamwork makes the dream work. We can get everybody together, learn how to execute a play. Do you realize you can teach listening, listening skills in football? Listening skills yeah. in football. You go on two, not on one. All right, there's a lot of things. So they're waiting to they're hear. Waiting to okay, hear. Yeah, yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. what I need to hear, yeah, coach, right. so Here, I can. Here's the play. If you jump off sides, you go back five yards. How disciplined are you? Do you show up at practice on time? Okay, homework. We're asking about the homework. Do you really think that in the evening, after spending eight hours at school, that in evening time, you're going to, many kids are going to go to the library? Yeah, right. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, after practice, a coach can encourage them to go to, to, go the, to, the, to the library. library. And so, that's what the coach is So it's, is it's for. having a mentor. It's more like a, a mentorship program. That's why we call it Model Up. Okay, Model Up. Sixth and goal, model, model up. up. Let's talk a little bit about, you You have this really nice brochure that you've put together. Student athletes achieve on the field and in the classroom. This is important because basically what you're telling me is if they can achieve on the field, then they can achieve in the classroom as well. It's the carrot too, all right? For example, if I know that to play on Saturday, I have to go to school on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, then I'm gonna do that, mm -hmm. all right? Whoops. The sorry. phone is going off. Okay. All right. Uh, that's okay. Sorry, no, sorry. you're fine. Uh, uh. So that's the bottom line there. Secondly, student athletes practice discipline daily. I get that. 
I think most people do. I mean, it takes a lot of discipline yes. to be an athlete. But you're teaching them something that if they weren't in sixth and goal, they wouldn't get that message. Being on time, working together. Hey, listen, in order to play on Saturday, I need you to do everything you need to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. You know, I coached for 20 years. Here's one thing I realized, Donna. The people who jumped off sides on Saturday, the ones who missed assignments on Saturday, usually missed class during the week. It ha you, you start, you I win see. every day, mm -hmm. not on Saturday. Not on Saturday. All right, you win on Friday night, student athletes. I tell my son that all the time. You win a little bit at a time, inch by inch, life is a cinch. Real quickly here, your son is actually playing ball, right? Yes, he, he, he's placed, but he's, yeah. of course. Yeah, yes. Of course he does, <laughs> yeah. of course. Like father, like yeah, son. That's right. um, another bullet point we have, student athletes graduate. That's very important, and we need to hear this. These students have the capacity, the ability, Absolutely. the opportunity to graduate. And they're expected to graduate because in college, you have to graduate, you have to pass a certain percentage of your degree complete a certain percentage of degree every semester, every year in order to continue to play. So you have those benchmarks that you have to meet. Mm -hmm. Well, same thing in AAA Association. You have to be eligible to participate. If a kid or student athlete is not involved in somebody holding them accountable, already we realize some challenges they face at home. Well, that coach can hold them and say, hey, listen, I need you to make sure. I'm going to give you a perfect example. Coach Rip, mm -hmm. Charles Ripley, who mm -hmm. who's coached for Arkansas Baptist College. He calls his players all the time and says, what's your grades? All right, you want to be on the basketball court? I need to make sure you're making these grades. It's the same thing. Same thing. And finally, student athletes attend class. But you're pushing that. You're yeah. telling them that they must go to school. They have to go to school. Well, that's the carrot I was referencing. If they want to play, they have to go. Okay. Okay. If you don't have something, why are you motivated to go? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 we work for a check. So you're instilling these values very and, and, young and, and, and in the sixth grade. Yes. So even, even if they decide in high school that they don't want to play football, they don't have to, but you've instilled these, uh, these uh, values. Values. Yes. Thank you. In, in these students at a young age. And if we get them to high school, maybe they don't want to play, but they are in high school. Right. You know, we have a program called Victory Over Violence. Yes. And you were talking a lot about how this is really very much like that. It's, it's, it's a program to make sure that these children aren't getting themselves in trouble. Yes. The perfect example. I was had lunch with Steve Landers uh, a few months ago, and Steve Landers told me that he's amazed at the age of some of the young men stealing cars from his car lot, mm -hmm. 13 and 14 years old, all right? Now think about that, all right? So there's a lot of things going on. Who, who, th these young people are gonna be mentored by somebody. Mm -hmm. We're trying to put a positive role model because if you start out doing a little bit like this, the next thing you know, you're covering the story from homicide and things like this, if we don't get our young people down at a very early age, we see what the result is. I mean, okay. how many homicides we had last year? 54? Mm. Sixth and goal is a good way to get them young. Early. Get them young. Okay. All right. In our next segment with Fitz Hill, we will be talking about the Little Rock mayoral race and maybe something else you might find interesting. Sorry about that.